Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, Side Effects is holding a 31 day challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic. I've decided to take on the challenge and record each day's work so that you can see the process. I'm doing this so that I can challenge myself and I'd recommend that you do the same. So, let's get straight into it. Alrighty, today is day six. Today's topic is swing. And why is my brush so fat? Okay, day six, swing. The idea that I have for this one is to make a pendulum, but a sand pendulum. I wanted to do like the usual pendulum, which just swings back and forth, um, but I thought that might be kind of boring. So I thought, let me throw in some dynamics with it and make the thing draw in some sand. Now, I don't know how accurate Houdini's physics are, so I don't know if I'm going to get the pattern. Um, those patterns are called lease. Um, Lisa Zhu pattern and basically it just gets drawn because the pendulum's momentum shifts axes. Um, I don't know if Houdini can do that yet but we'll find out. So I'm going to go straight into this and I'll catch you on the flip side. Okay so I'm recording this after I finished the entire effect. Things been rendered out, I've even submitted it. But what I want to show you is how wrong this project went. Honestly everything that could have gone wrong with this project went wrong. And it makes me kind of sad because in the beginning I was like, this is going to be amazing. And I'll show you why I thought that. Um, it's mostly because of how quickly I figured out the pendulum thing. So I'll show you the pendulum. Let me just hide objects and go to my pendulum dynamics. So what I ended up with was this over here. I tried to make a pendulum where it only swung from one like point, but it didn't work. And so I did this where it connects at the top because I saw a picture where it has like these two strings that come down and then it's connected there. And I figured that would probably fix my issue because originally the pendulum was just swinging like back and forth and back and forth. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back. And forth and just making a straight line. And I was like, what? I don't understand physics. And then I saw a picture and so it made a lot more sense. So those two at the top are pinned, that's free over there, the bottom one is free. So you end up with this. Um, basically I just gave it initial velocity and it just kind of swings, which is really cool. It was just done with vellum, um, so this is just like distance constraints. And then, if you let this run, check it, you end up with the pattern, right? The, the Lisa Zhu pattern. Um, it's drawn, you can actually watch it get drawn out, like, it was so cool, I was so happy with this. because. That just means that Houdini's physics is on point. Like that's I took that and put it into this Pendulum Geo uh, setup. This was quite complex because I had to replace all of this and create these rings. And so this one had to be based on like the direction of the, the wire, but then the pendulum at the bottom had to kind of swing independently. So it's, a, it's kind of complicated, but this is what it gives you, all right? So it swings, and as you can see, that points in the right direction. This points slightly in the right direction, and I can control how much um, how much it shifts. So over here, you can see that I have a blend. Um, oh, I'm loading from disk. Let me show you this. Yeah, so I can blend, right? So I can blend if it's pointing in the direction of this thing, of the wire, or if it's pointing towards the ground. So I gave like an intermediate value, so that it has a bit of wobble. And then I was really happy with this. I was like, this is so cool. This is gonna be amazing. Everyone's gonna flip out. Great. And so I needed to set up some grains. So I made a sand setup, right? Um, I didn't really show you, but I made this base. And then you bring it in, you fill the base with um, sand, right? So you just do a grain source like that. And then I was like, you know what would be really smart? If I had to take the pattern, right, this thing, and use it because I know that that's where the pendulum is going to swing. So it needs to simulate that area. So I remove that area, right? So this is the area for simulation. And then I have an area that is untouched, this area over here. So now I can simulate fewer particles. And I was so chuffed with that. I, I thought I was onto something. Now this, this is where it all falls apart. So my simulation, I first tried grains. It was taking upwards of an hour per simulation, and that was low res. I was like, there's no way. In a 24 hour contest, there's no way I can do a one hour simulation. So 
I went for highly viscous fluid instead. So then there was another thing where I thought I was onto something, right? I switched to a highly viscous fluid because sand, when it's very fine, acts like a fluid. Think of quicksand. It's just very fine sand. So I was like, oh, it's perfect. I'll just make a highly viscous fluid. Great. So I try that. This is where things don't go as planned. So I simulate it out. This is what comes out of my dynamics network, right? So the pendulum swings and you should see these, right? They get pushed apart, right? So it's making the pattern and it's so cool. I'm so happy with that. I saw this and I was like, oh, this is brilliant. This is it's going to be the best effect I've made. But then you merge it together and there's an issue. It doesn't fit. And so I tried everything I could to mix these two together to like blend that area. Um, you can see that I end up with something that kind of works. It's not perfect, but it's it's close, right? You can see that over there. And this is where I was really sad because I knew that I couldn't use this. From this angle, it's fine. This is the angle that I rendered from, right? See like this. But what I really wanted was an angle from above, like a bird's eye view, so that you could see the pattern. But then you also saw this distinction over here. And man, it was just, it was really disappointing. You know, it was going very, very right until it went very, very wrong. Then I, I render this out overnight. I'm like, okay, you know, this is fine. It's all right. Let me render it out. I'll just make it a very nice render. High quality, like HD with no noise and high sampling. And so I do that. And then I wake up in the morning and I check it out. Turns out I transformed my pendulum by mistake and it was no longer touching the sand in the render. So it looks like it's using telepathy or something, right? I, I can show you the render over here. And so I had to re-render. But now I only have like five hours left. The render is going to take eight hours. I had to drop the resolution. So I dropped the resolution to like 12, uh, what's it, 1280 by 720. And then I rendered it again. And like the end result was good. I was happy with it, but it wasn't what I wanted, right? It wasn't great and it could have been great. And so now I, I basically just fear grain simulation and not because of this one. This goes, this goes way back guys. This is, this is my roots. So not many people actually know the story, but it's the story of my first like big job. Um, that I got for uh, another studio. Uh, this goes back a couple of years. My brother is in CG, right? He's been working in 3D for a while. I kind of dabble in it. You know, I, I'm i just testing the waters, playing around in Blender. I think I'd had about two years of Blender experience and I was mostly using it for product shots and product visualizations. And I was making some money off of that and it was cool. But then I discovered Houdini and I was like, whoa, this seems so, so crazy. I used to watch Man vs. Machine and things, and I was like, whoa, this is insane. So I tried to learn Houdini three months in, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm starting, starting to get this. And so my brother goes in to meet this guy. He's a technical director, and this technical director's like, hey, I got a job for you. It's about modeling and texturing and stuff. And so this technical director says, you don't happen to know anyone who knows Houdini, do you? My brother's like, yeah, and I do. My, my brother knows Houdini. So technical director's like, great, bring him in. So next time we all meet up, the three of us, and the technical director puts forth the following proposition. We need a shot for a movie. We need you to work on a landslide, right? A landslide. And so he asked me, can you do it? I'm like, easy, man, come on. Guys, to this day, I do not know how to make a landslide. So anyways, that was the worst month potentially of my life. I worked pretty much 16 hour days. I was working on one computer, rendering on another. Every time the render was done, I was working on, you know, both computers, trying to set up two different simulations, running them overnight. And then the anxiety of not knowing if it's gonna work or not. And I only had three months of experience at this point. And that is where my fear of grains began because I tried to do it with grains, and I did the same thing that I just did today. I switched to a viscous fluid and it worked, but clearly I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I don't think my health has ever been so compromised in one month. And for some reason, the place down the road from, from where I was working 
had a special right on peanuts cocktail peanuts and monster energy drink so that's all i had all day every day there were just cans of monster on my desk i'm sure my heart rate sounded like dubstep and so you know that probably shaved off a couple of years off my life was i foolish to take the job yes did i know better no it wasn't that i was lying when i told him that i could do it i was just mistaken so i later discovered that something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Basically, if you haven't heard of it, it's a cognitive bias, which basically explains the relationship between confidence and competence. So how competent you are at something versus how confident you are about that thing. So it looks something like this. You have on the y-axis, that's a very skewed line. You have on the y-axis, you have confidence. Right, confidence. Over here on the x-axis, you have competence, right? So confidence and competence. In the case of Houdini, I'll use Houdini as an example, but this applies to a lot of things. When you start out, your confidence is really low and your competence, of course, because you're starting out is also low. So, you know, near zero. And then you start learning things. You're like, cool, I'm figuring out how to use some nodes and I'm really starting to get the hang of this. And then you get really, really confident because you maybe did your first fluid sim or something and it came out right. And so you reach this point up here and you think that you know everything. You think that you're very competent, but then something ruins your confidence. For me, it was a landslide, right? A landslide came along and wiped out my confidence. So I'm here, they call this mount stupidity. It's the point where you're at your highest confidence but lowest competence. And then something comes along and maybe it's something like you just discovered micro solvers or you just discovered constraint networks or sub solvers or forces and then all of a sudden your confidence plummets all the while your competence is increasing but then you reach this point over here and this part over here is actually where most people are they figure out some things in houdini they realize that there's a lot more to houdini than they thought so they come plummeting down and then they sit over here for a bit um but then you now know what you're in store for so your confidence slowly increases with your competence. So it looks something like that. And so my advice to you is ask yourself where you are. Honestly, because I lied to myself. I thought I was somewhere here when in fact I was somewhere here. I was summiting Mount Stupidity. And so ask yourself where you are. It gives you a good gauge of what you have to learn and where you should go. So, you know, if you're just starting out, it's cool. There's lots of great tutorials out there. <clears throat> Houdini isn't scary. Link down in the description. And then you can get yourself to this point over here. And hopefully you can skip that mount stupidity. You can just cut right through. So yeah, I just thought I would share that because I just want everyone to know that although it may seem like I get these things right a lot of the time, and you may think or not that I'm, you know, professional or I'm talented or whatever it may be, just know that there's a lot that I struggle with. There's a lot that I don't understand yet. What I do try and do is push my limits and work to my strengths. So I know that things like VEX and coding are my strong points. So I tend to focus on that. I know that animation and rigging and fur and crowd sim, all of those things are my weak points. So when it comes to things like tutorials, I don't impede on other people's talents. There are people who are much better at those things than I am. So try and understand what you're good at. Work to your strengths. Honestly check where you feel you are on that Dunning-Kruger graph. You don't want to be on Mount Stupidity. It's a, it's a rough place to be, trust me. So yeah, I just thought I would share that. Um, just so you know that these things don't always go, go as planned. And what you need to do is you need to adapt. You need to learn how to adjust. And at the end of the day, I'm actually proud of this little thing that I came up with. I went from something that was unusable and I salvaged it. So you'll have your little victories and you'll have your heartaches in Houdini, but just know everybody has that and it's all part of the learning curve. So yeah, here's the final render. You can take a look. This was for Swing. I hope you enjoyed this. It wasn't really a tutorial and it wasn't really a walkthrough. It was more of a rant. So I get it. If you dislike and unsubscribe, this isn't what you signed up for. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching and um, I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.